In the context of, of um, what the previous speaker has said, I'd like to say bonjour, bon dia, um, namaste. I was trying to go through all the languages that across the piece I had learned of, I've had to use just in the, the last year um, because I'm, I'm in post for a year. So it's just coming up for my first anniversary. Uh, no need to buy me flowers or anything like that. I'll deal with that in the office. Um, but uh, part and parcel of what it is I've been doing as, as part of my role and a legitimate part of my role is I promote um, the GTC in an international way. So I'd spent uh, just uh, probably a couple of weeks ago and I'm going Thursday, Friday, I'm going out to Brussels to speak at the Brussels Parliament uh, on education. And boy, you see the power of uh, languages there. Me being translated into Italian, French, Spanish, German, you name it, I was translated. Um, and I was at a dinner and they were talking about, and talking in fluent English, which was just wonderful to listen to, with those lovely accents. So it's always got just that wee spin on it. And, and um, they were joking with us. And, and, I, I, and um, I was saying uh, about, well, you're all speaking in English, so we'll speak English with you. And, and they said, no, no, you're not speaking in English. You're speaking in Scottish. And I said, how would you define Scottish? And their definition was bad English. Well, that started, that, that started a bit of a fight at the table uh, because I'm a North Lanarkshire girl uh, to trade, so you don't mess with North Lanarkshire girls, I have to say. Um, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm kind of at that stage where I'm watching the table here and I'm sure they're suffering from flashbacks because this is about the sixth time they've heard this. Um, but uh, as, I, as I come each time, I bring something that I've learned from each session, which is really interesting. So um, I'm, I'm probably kind of got this question for you. Are you sitting there thinking, for goodness sake, what is it the GTC can do for us as modern linguists? Is that in your head? I, I just wondered about that in terms of the concept of who we are and what we do. Uh, because I think uh, people think of us as the regulator and we have that very strong identity. But they, they perhaps don't think of us as being a huge supporter or a promoter or an advocate or an ambassador. Uh, and actually we are, and I'm going, I'm actually, I'm going to prove it to you today. Uh, I think that's really important. So I'd, I'd like you to kind of take that away that don't just see us as a, as a single dimension organization. Try and think of us as multidimensional and don't think of us as, as a, an organization that dictates, but an organization that wants to enter into professional conversations with you that helps you do what it is you want to do. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that will be there. How can we possibly help you um, in a very busy uh, day along the piece? So, so here, here are the five things that from those who have already engaged in these particular meetings have conveyed to me and made me reflect on how I can assist you in your job and by doing that, assisting the children of Scotland. So it seems to me that ma that manifesto commitment offers you a challenge in terms of having staff with the right skills and knowledge to deliver. So there is absolutely no doubt from listening to Louise, from looking at the reports across the piece, that actually there is, there is a need to make sure that you have the right staff and the knowledge. So the things you might want to do at the moment, you would love to do, I'd love to do that, but I can't. So perhaps working and listening to me today, you can see some of those barriers that could potentially be removed. Equally, what came across in the previous meetings is how do you, how do you provide the diversity? How do you do that? Uh, and how do, you, how do you meet the needs? Um, because sometimes in a school, the timetable becomes the thing in itself. Um, I remember as being principal teacher of English, asking in the newly born timetable, it was something that grew over a period of six months, asking for two periods to be changed was like asking for the meaning of life to come to an end. How dare you, how very dare you? Um, and actually, it's about the timetable should meet the needs of the children. They've got demands, it's not bending children to meet the timetable. Uh, that's a wee bit of a concept that needs a bit of negotiation. Yeah, meeting needs is a good concept, I think. And that diversity 
as well. They're not the one size fits all. From the GTC point of view, um, we see you as a learner. We see you as a teacher, but we see you as a learner. And we see you as a lifelong learner. So if you're facing this agenda, how can we help and support you and the staff that you work with to learn? And that, that, was, that was really important because there's never enough time. Let's be honest with you. It's the worst four letter word that you can have in education is time. And equally too, it's about getting those issues on the agenda. How do you get your voice heard in the context of so many priorities? It, it, you know, is it the question of STEM versus one plus two? You know, the movie, you could do it, couldn't you? you know, and, and the superheroes take the position in terms of getting that on the agenda. So how can you naturally get it on the agenda? And how can you naturally get that on the agenda with meaning and within the context of the structures and where you don't cause offence as well. Because part of the danger that you have about the subject that you teach is the passion that you bring. I think professional registration will help you out as well. And all these things have existed for quite some time in uh, GTCS, but they're not always known. So there's a wee bit of opportunity here for me to do the, the kind of publicising bit. There is a professional recognition that comes through GTC as well. And I think that could help out of modern languages. And there's a new Professional Excellence Award, and this is new on the stocks, a way of celebrating. There is the return of dual registration and some new news about a new category for you in terms of broad general education. And, and the last bit, it's a bit of a, a taster or a teaser, as you might say, in terms of how can we look at initial education to help out modern languages. So there, these all sit within the GTC agenda and can certainly help you out, both as a principal teacher in the role that you have, but they can help a very positive conversation with management in schools, because that's where the decision is made, and equally to inform debate at a more local level with folk like Lawrence who are trying to push things forward in the context of school. So those are the things I think that we can help with. The first on this list here was the idea of how can the professional standards and how can professional learning and how can professional update help the, the one plus two agenda? Because you don't always see them in there. If you were to be looking at the professional standards, you will be disappointed in me because it doesn't say modern languages. But what it does talk about is it talks about learning and teaching. And I was listening to the previous speaker there sitting within our, um, our our standards are the professional values of social justice. And social justice talks about inclusion, it talks about international education, it talks about global citizenship. Modern languages is living and breathing in the professional standards. And remember that to remain a teacher and develop as a teacher, you are not asked to, you are required to use the professional standards. So the professional standards gives you a very strong agenda and framework. So why am I doing it? If someone asks you that question, to remain a very effective modern linguist and remain in those standards, there's your answer. It's, it, and it's in a positive way, because sometimes in the context of trying to remain a professional, you get lost in the mire. The standards give you a lovely framework to set that into. But equally too, the standards are there to help your professional learning. They are not there to judge yourself against. The SFR is the benchmark. The rest of them remain as your learning pathway. And throughout that, for those of you at principal teacher level, there is absolutely no doubt that if you were to go to the career-long professional learning standard and the middle leadership standard and even the leadership standard, you would find that they would help you get the modern languages agenda onto the table. You, you're probably at that stage just now where you're doing professional review and development. And actually, to use the professional standards, it's at the heart of PRD. And if you're using PRD, you're heading towards professional update. Professional update is something that folk don't necessarily feel hugely comfortable with some of the time. But actually, all it requires you to do is to learn. So what I've got on the screen here is something I would really like you to take away. And when the slides go out, I'd like you to litter your, your departmental base with it. This is professional update. That's it. 
It's no more and no less than that. So here's a story. Here's a story in the circle here. I've got to drive forward professional learning for modern languages. I've really got to drive it forward. So I'm going to go to the standards and I'm going to do a bit of professional learning. Section one, I'm going to self-evaluate me or work with someone to self-evaluate an aspect of modern languages that they would want to take forward. Step one, and I'll show you the materials we have for that. So they've not to fix modern languages, they've to fix an area. They have to take forward and develop a single area. So there's depth. Two, they've got to then go on and identify their own kind of professional learning. So the learning has focus, not doing too much, so there's not a workload issue. Deep focus and choosing their own learning over the piece. Ownership and focus. Three, they do what sometimes teachers are unable to do. But because this is part of the PRD and the professional update, they take their knowledge and they put it into use in the classroom. That's what they're doing using the standard. So they, sit, they put it in place. They look and they see where it works and where it doesn't work and they learn. They then begin to say, at some point I'm going to be having a PRD and at some point I'm going to be having my professional update. So I actually want to try and gather some evidence around that. And then what you do is you have your PRD, where it means that there is a formal opportunity to have a discussion with the management in the school about the progress of modern languages and how it's being taken forward. So you're straight into your senior management. You're influencing their thinking, you're showing them the difference it made, and you're taking the evidence of impact. And that's all because you use the professional standards. Equally to, it is about uh, looking at your professionalism uh, um, and what we offer you. I was thinking about this when I was putting these slides together and I was listening to the work that was going on in the primary, secondary uh, liaison element of it. And I'm, I'm very much aware that out there, you're doing an awful lot of work. Who's telling you you're doing it very well? Who's recognizing and valuing and celebrating what you do? And what credit are you being given for it? So I'm telling you that the GTC is bringing an opportunity for you to do a bit of, it is a bit of research using the career long professional learning standard, but actually you get an accreditation for it from us. So if you've been doing some work on primary second liaison, not a project, but looking at something that you want to drive forward, you've got a rationale, you've been doing some professional reading, you've been implementing it, you've been evaluating it, you've been sharing it with your colleagues and your, um, your CMT, then you'll find that you can get professional recognition as an individual. And that's really important for building that up. But equally too, and I'm, just, I'm really delighted to see that SILT uh, colleagues are here today, that you can also, as a modern linguist, engage in the SILT programme which is professionally recognised. So anyone taking on the SOAP programme will get professional recognition with the GTC as well. And actually, it's a way of promoting professionalism in your departments and actually letting parents and your CMT and the wider community know of what kind of level of professionalism sits there with modern languages. But for the hard work you do, you get that and you celebrate it. You have to be um, a fully registered teacher and it's only awarded for every five years. So it's not a lifetime award. But you know and I know that after five years, what do they do? They go and change education on you again. So it's about keeping you fresh, but it's about deepening your learning. It's about developing expertise. And if, if and I know, I know what you're like, you rushed home last night to see the outcome of the governance review, didn't you? I knew you did. But if you look at what's come out of that about the master teacher, Boom, it's sitting right in professional recognition. That's our connection into that and the accomplished teacher. So some of you may have got professional recognition um, from SILT, well done, and some of you may be doing something that would fit into that. And if you're not doing that in your role, can you encourage those in your department to take that on and deepen their professionalism, both as an individual or as a group? Equally, we've got, and these, these are only just being piloted, so if you want to be sector leading, I dare you, I very dare you to start planning 
for the Professional Excellence Learning Awards. If you're doing something to do with modern languages in a school or in a community, then there's an opportunity to get a Professional Excellence Award. And this is about collaboration, it's about professional learning, it can be about primary secondary liaison, it's about using the standards, it's about using the, our um, new framework, which I'll show you um, in a moment. And it's held every three years. So again, again, it's about attracting people into modern languages in your school because you know how competitive it is. You know now how numbers can go down. Can you imagine that you've got staff in your school where you've got a school that says, we use the professional standards, we've got staff who've got professional recognition, we get professional recognition through programmes and individuals, and in fact, this school holds a GTC Professional Excellence Award in Modern Languages. That is a way of boosting your numbers and boosting your confidence. And if you're going for these things, it's, a, it's about being fast on your feet. It's about making your department very attractive to the senior management who hold the timetable and the curriculum in your school. So use these things positively to deepen knowledge, to take forward learning and to promote your subject as well. So the Professional Learning Awards, more information will come out about this um, in coming months because we're just trialling them at the moment. Are you or are members of your school team a hidden diamond? Remember those five points that I put up about diversity, about meeting needs? I want to, in my case, going back to when the dinosaurs ruled the world, remember your degree and the combination of your degree. Modern linguists rarely, in my experience, do one language. You do two. For example, my sister is a Spanish-Portuguese graduate. So actually, she went on to teach just Spanish. I'm an English teacher to trade, but my original degree had English history. I'm a hidden diamond to the education workforce in Scotland. Yes. I'm quite proud of that because tomorrow morning I could go ding and reactivate my history and in a year's time, if I follow what the GTC requires, I could be a history teacher. There's a, there's a, a, a head teacher out there thinking, yeah. Social subjects was falling apart. I'm getting a much more flexible member of staff. So look at your degree and go back to your school and think about what you're trying to achieve. Is there a modern language that you think you would like to implement? And is there someone in your department who has got sufficient in their degree to go through professional registration and reactivate that learning that they had? And to assist you, I know that the GTC has in the past perhaps not always been as flexible as we would want them to be. So I'm saying to you, I'm looking at the residency requirements to make that much more flexible for the second language. The first language, I still think there's something you need to hold on to because you need that strong identity. But I dare you, I am daring you to think about that. So if you've been struggling and you've got someone in your department and they've already been in contact with GTCS, and they've got the knockback so far, can you knock on my door again and let me know their story? So that they have to hold full registration, they have to have the academic requirements in their degree, the residency that we will look at, and in terms of the probationary period, that, that really is irksome to some folk, but all they need to do is work in the school for a year, so it's not really a big deal if you can get the timetable for that. And in terms of the three-year period, I'm also looking at that in terms of flexibility. Dual, dual registration, we're bringing it back now. Um, just a wee bit of an update on that. Is it working? I've reintroduced it because I think it's valuable. I've reintroduced it, I think it's flexible. And modern languages is sitting in there. It's one of the ones that we thought of, including Gaelic. So think about that too, for those of you who may be uh, in the Gaelic world. Bringing it back and that, that helps too, because there's nothing worse as a modern linguist saying, I can't do that. Within the Scottish education system this year coming in, we have got 80 probationers who are looking to do dual registration, not all in modern languages, but some in STEM, a lot in STEM because of the big STEM agenda. 
And as I've said to everyone else, where do these dual qualified people come from? Well, actually, where do the modern linguists from the future come from? It's dead simple. They're in your class just now. They're in your first year class, your second year class, your third year class, your fourth year class, your fifth year class. You need to start sowing the seeds just now and let them know that they can do two languages because sometimes they get lost in the morass of things as they get a bit older. So dual qualification is on its way. There are some modern linguists there and probationers have been placed, perhaps a bit late at this stage for this year, but next year, if you've got some students who are coming into your schools and remember the new relationships that we have in terms of student placement, it's opt out in terms of taking students by exception. So everyone should be taking them to build the profession. If you're, if you're bumping into some students, plant the seed. Um, you're closer to that than I am, but we would certainly want to do that. So you can have your two languages, and they can do that for both the traditional TIS route, teacher induction scheme, and for those who are on the flexible route as well. So for those who, who are on supply, and you need to ask your, your supply teachers, are you a supply teacher? Yes, and I know they're thin on the ground, but some supply teachers are also probationers. And we're doing some very immediate work to make sure that the TIS and the flexible route get an equality of experience. So help me out with that, and you'll see the conditions there in terms of service. So nearly at the end here, and here's the and finally. And finally, a couple of things where I'm getting a bit daring here, and I'm going to be daring to you. I don't know how much you really know about the GTC. It's not the thing that you run to every day. Um, we're the people who um, accredit um, um, the universities, and we also have the memorandum um, of entry requirements. And I've said to everyone else, I've read this, and at the moment, it is possible to be a primary teacher, and you would be teaching as a primary teacher, primary seven French or German or Spanish, if you're part and parcel of it. And the last time that primary teacher knocked on the door of French, German or Spanish is when they were in S2. Uh, and they've never taken any formal qualification in it at all. So in 2020, and there is that alignment between what you're trying to do with one plus two and the entry memorandum, we're going to be consulting on the entry memorandum. As modern linguists, do you think that that's enough that the last time they touched the modern languages when they were in secondary school and then they're asked to be teachers and teach it in primary? I'll leave that for you to think about in terms of the consultation. Who would it be for me to, to very dare to suggest that you say something else? So that's coming um, and see if you can get a bit of traction against that. Last but not least, a wee bit of information. Some universities are putting in concurrent degrees. So what's happening in the primary now is they're doing the general primary um, degree, but they're bringing in a specialism. And some are thinking of bringing in modern languages as a specialism. So there'll be the enhanced primary teacher in the future. And the last one on there is the, the broad general education. Broad general education category has been introduced through our council. It's not been developed yet, but what it means is our categories at the moment are primary, secondary, and FE. This is the fourth category, broad general education, which means that a primary teacher can go on to teach in the early stages of secondary, and a secondary teacher can comfortably teach at the later stages of primary, and that could be for modern languages. What a wonderful opportunity for maintaining that momentum across the piece.